than uh, people bu people bugging you? Uh, <laughs> I think my family uh, does a pretty good job. I uh, keep it pretty low stress for me, um, but I think we keep it pretty in-house and uh, keep the expectations and uh, things within our clubhouse and just try and focus on playing baseball. Stay right here. Adley, just how much buzz have you felt around the city, just the fans and the support you guys have been getting throughout this week? Uh, yeah, it's been exciting. Uh, it was cool to have uh, fans out on uh, Wednesday uh, for the sim game and uh, kind of just feel that energy and people getting excited. But uh, I think we're, you know, excited for Saturday and ready to get going. Adley, are, are the butterflies maybe you feel right now remind you at all of the College World Series? Um, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, playing in a big game like this, um, I think you try and prepare yourself uh, to put yourself in that mindset throughout the year when there's we've had big games. And uh, I think our guys are, are ready to go and um, are excited to be playing in a, you know, high level, uh, high level game like this. Adley, a lot's, been, row in the middle, sorry. A, a lot's been said about how the postseason is totally different from the regular season. What have, what have you noticed just from maybe watching some of the postseason games already or just uh, imagining what these games are going to be like? How do you imagine it will be different from the regular season? Um, I mean, I feel like I've noticed just in any game that you play, um, you know, going back a couple years to now, uh, once, you, once you step on the field and you get that first pitch out of the way, it becomes baseball. Um, there's a lot of stuff that leads into into games, but once you get going, uh, it just feels like feels like baseball again. We'll stay there. Adley Bradish had such a great season, and especially the second half. I mean, what was going so well for him later in the year? Um, I mean, just to see his learning curve. Uh, you know, he's always had phenomenal stuff, but to see how his pitches are used most effectively, um, and to kind of just build. Uh, himself up and his identity as a pitcher. Um, he's become confident in that and um, really uh, confident in, in what he's becoming. So I think uh, just to see his confidence day in and day out and his plan going into each game is, is really fun to be a part of. One row behind. Third Adley, row. what stands out to you about the Texas Rangers, both as a guy who will be handling their hitters from behind the plate and facing their pitchers? Yeah, they're a really good team. Um, played them earlier in the year and um, you know, they were good then. Uh, it's been cool to watch uh, what they've gone through this year, and um, I think we're excited to play them. I think up front on the right, Adley. Adley. I'm sorry, go ahead. Hey, Dan. Hey, Adley. Um, so when you made your, your debut, you took that famous you know, moment to kind of look around and soak it all in that we all wrote about. Famous. Um, famous. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Do you do you expect to do that kind of thing today? I mean, tomorrow or, or during the, the series at all? Uh, I'm really excited to see the crowd. Um, I, I've heard that playoff baseball here is is pretty cool. Um, I was talking to uh, Ryan Klemek about it. He said he went to a postseason game here in 2014 and said the atmosphere was absolutely electric. So uh, I'm really excited to you know to see the fans and uh, just to feel that excitement. We'll stay in that row, Adley. This is going to be probably the biggest crowd you've ever seen at least here in Camden Yards. You talked about it being electric. Are there other nerves that are, are going out through there or how you're going to deal with the loudness of it and all? Um, I feel like we've played in some pretty loud environments. Um, you know, whenever you're playing like indoor stadiums too, it's, it seems to be a little bit louder for some reason. But um, like I said, when, when you uh, like get going and start playing, you're just in the moment you're playing and it just becomes another baseball game and uh, you see guys really settle down. So uh, I'm excited to just get going. Two rows behind Gabe. Oh, hey, Adley. It hasn't been Hi. that long since you made your famous debut. Um, <laughs> and since then, you've seen Gunner come up and, and Grayson come up and Jordan and all these guys. What has it been like to, for that process for you to watch them come up and, and you suddenly being maybe not an old guy, but an older guy in that process? <laughs> uh, it's to see guys go through uh, multiple years of development and um, experience together uh, to see them end up at this spot, kind of achieving their dream and, and their goals uh, is really cool. Uh, you feel invested in kind of the process and, and their journey. And, um, you know, I'm just excited for these guys and, um, you know, to see their character and they're such good guys, uh, you want to see them succeed. And um, I think it's what makes our clubhouse so close is the fact that you got guys who care about each other genuinely and um, it makes it that much more exciting and uh, that much better to show up to the ballpark every day. 
Uh, far back, the left center aisle. Yeah, the, you, you talked about the crowd and the atmosphere. How much do you guys truly feed off of that atmosphere in the crowd, and how beneficial will that be, especially the first two games here at Camden Yards? Yeah, I feel like our guys really enjoy uh, playing in, in uh, you know, big-time environments. And uh, when the crowd's into it, I think our guys definitely feed off of it. Um, it's something that we've noticed throughout the year that, um, you know, when the crowd gets loud, guys get more excited. And, um, you know, it's it just makes everything that much better. Uh, right across the aisle on the right. What's up, Adley? Um, Hi. This week of rest, I mean, uh, obviously you guys, you know, played to, to get this this week. Um, how beneficial has it been? And uh, is any part of you kind of apprehensive about a potential rust factor when you do uh, get out there tomorrow? Uh, I think uh, our guys have made the most of it, um, really gotten their bodies right. Um, you know, I think we've done a good job uh, practicing throughout this week, sim games and whatnot. So um, I think our guys are well rested, ready to go. And, um, you know, our team's excited. And uh, so I, I think uh, there's no apprehension. In the second row on your right, Atley. What is it about the young guys on this team you think that allows them to handle those big moments, big games so well? Honestly, I think it starts at the top. Uh, just having, uh, I guess, a, a team chemistry that's very process oriented and um, guys go out and they just play ball. Um, they have fun doing it and, um, you know, it becomes less about uh, what's going on around them and more about just focusing on the team and what we got to do to win. So. Um, when you have that mindset, it, it makes baseball uh, a lot more fun, and uh, you have a very clear goal in mind. I'll stay right there. Uh, Adley, a couple of years ago when you were in the minor leagues and this team was losing 100 games a season, could you have imagined that just a couple years later this year that you guys could win 100 games, be the top team in the American League, host a, you know, be the top seed, host playoff games? Yeah, I think uh, going into spring training this year, we really had a an expectation that uh, we were going to, you know, we had a talented team, and we were going to see what we could do. Um, I know a couple years ago, back in Altsite, you know, we had a couple guys down there uh, who were coming up together, and uh, you know, we always talked about the what if and what we could do. But uh, it was—you never know until you get here and you see the clubhouse that you have together. And like I said, in spring training, we kind of saw that, and uh, guys were excited to get going this year. And um, I think to see the way we've battled throughout the years is something special, and I think we're very proud of uh, the way we handled the regular season. So you guys are ready for the next step. I'll take a few more in the second row on your left. Adley, you're sitting up there. You've, you've been smiling a lot today. Just how does it feel to, to be in the position that you're in right now going into the postseason? Uh, the excitement has been felt from a couple of guys on the team, but for you personally, how excited are you to get this going tomorrow? Uh, I mean, I'm super excited. This is like a – this is a complete blessing to have an opportunity like this to play postseason baseball with a great group of guys, um, you know, in a stadium uh, with an electric atmosphere. And uh, so there's, I mean, there's nothing more you can really ask for. It's, uh, you know, the the opportunity to do something like this is amazing and you kind of cherish it. And so, I mean, that's why I'm smiling and I just crushed a cold brew, so. <laughs> <laughs> we'll stay right there. Um. Adley, you and, um, the, and the Rays were battling it out for much of the season, trying to get first place in the AL East. What struck you about the way the Rangers were able to sort of um, neutralize them in that sweep with, like, only one run scored? And yeah, the, I mean, they're a phenomenal team, and they've had a, a great year. Um, so, uh, you know, good pitching, uh, good bats. Um, you know, for us, it's always been about, like, trying to keep it on us and what we can control. and. Um, so we're going to try and come out with a good plan from a hitting pitching side, and and uh, that's what we've done all year. So we're going to try and continue to do that. The two last quick ones. Adley, you've had a really good perspective on the progress that the starting pitchers have made this year, Kyle, Grace, and Dean. How would you characterize where they started and where they're entering the playoffs right now as a group? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's been very cool to see their journey. Um, they've gotten a lot better since the beginning of the year, and – uh, it's just a testament to who they are as as people and as uh, players, uh, continuing to try and get better. Um, they've always they've always had pretty good success, um, but to see them just continue to want to learn more and and just not be satisfied with where they're at it says a lot about them uh, as people. And um, it's cool to see how far they've come. We'll finish up with Andy right here. Adley, how have you seen this bullpen come together and, and 
stand really tall since Felix Bautista got injured? Um, our our team's really close, uh, and guys continue to pick each other up. And um, you know, Felix, that's a you know, it's tough. It's tough to see a, a friend go through that um, mm -hmm. and a, and a teammate. But um, like I said, guys are supportive, and uh, they continually pick each other up. Um, and our team's really close, so uh, guys will continue to do that. Emily, thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Brandon should be down in a few minutes. Started with Brandon. Uh, yeah. Uh, Izzy and Jason have mics. Uh, if you have a question, just raise your hand. <coughs> Who's got the first question for Brandon? I'll start off. <laughs> We're going to uh, So there's two starting pitchers for Saturday and Sunday. We're going to start Bradish game one and Grayson game two. And that's where we're going to do this weekend. There you go. All right. The second row on your left, Brandon. Brandon, uh, what, what, what about Kyle Bradish and the season that he had allows you to have the confidence in him to, to go out there for game one? Well, just how he's thrown the ball this season. I mean, and the, the improvements he's made over the course of the year and the improvements he's made from last year. And he just, be, he just had so many good starts for us. And the, we love his stuff. I like his makeup. Um, he's pitched in some meaningful games down the stretch and pitched extremely well. And we feel we have a lot of confidence going with him uh, going into game one. And Rock, are you proud of the way your guys seem to be handling all of this? It's new for most of them. It doesn't seem like the moment is, is too big. Yeah, and you know, when we have, we have so much inexperience and so many guys that have never had any sort of postseason experience, I just, just today I got to the park, they're, they're, it's really loose, and that's a great sign. Um, I think our workouts have, have gone really well the last few days. I don't see any, I don't feel any tension or guys uh, feeling nervous about what they're, what we're about to, the game's coming up. Um, but it, our clubhouse right now is pretty loud and, and seems very, very normal like the regular season. And that's, that's how what I'm, that's what I was hoping was hap was going to happen. I'll stay right there, Rich. Uh, Brandon, you're a, you're, you prepare painstakingly for, for each game. How much harder are you preparing for for these games? How much more thought do you give to the ro do you give to the rotation? Do you give to the starting lineup like for game one? You, you definitely put more thought into it, and we've had meetings about the roster we're going to set and what we see rotation wise, and some different options there. Um, so I've been working with our pitching guys and front office on just different ideas of going into this, this series. You know, we had to wait to see who we're, who we're playing. And so, um, you know, getting prepar preparing really since we clinched, preparing for the few teams that we might, we might face. And then when it became the Rangers, then obviously narrowed it down and just put more thought into it. And um, we haven't faced the Rangers since May. So, you know, that, that's a little different too. If we're playing the, the Blue Jays or the Rays, it would have been teams that we were very familiar with, but uh, playing the Rangers and not having seen them in a while, you definitely put more work into into 
watching and 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 uh, going over reports and those type of things with with those players. Stay right there. You talked about the fan support at the workout <coughs> the other day. Just how much buzz have you felt around the city this week, and how excited everybody is for this? Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I know our guys are really enjoying that. I'm enjoying that, to, especially for where we came from. And the, the, you know, have our fans be proud of of our team. Have our fans uh, enjoy watching us, and our fans have been just amazing this year with um, how positive they've been. And we're a fun team to watch. And and I know that. You know, it's uh, it makes you feel proud to, that the city is rallied around our our group, and uh, you know, just going out for dinner or whatever it may be, people walk up to you and say thank you. That's that's uh, that means a lot. Just that workout the other day, I wasn't expecting, I wasn't expecting, what was it, four or five thousand people here, um, in the middle of the day on a on a weekday to to just watch us practice, and so to see that and to and to hear the energy and feel the energy from the fans. It was pretty special. Andy? Brandon, you, you mentioned it's been like four or five months since you've seen Texas. How much has, has your team changed since May? Well, uh, I think that we have the same core group of guys. Um, but our, I think our, you know, our pitching's a little different. I think our, our young pitchers have grown. And, and uh, over the course of the year, Kyle Bradish has improved. Dean Kramer's improved. You know, Grayson's obviously improved a lot. Um, our bullpen's a little bit different. Uh, O'Hearn wasn't that middle of the order bat back then that that he became that the last two thirds of the year and such a great year he had and such a great story. Um, but I think we're pretty much the same club. Second row, Brandon. Late in the year, the runs were harder to come by. Some individuals struggled a bit. Does that mean nothing now, or is there any cause for concern or adjustments needed? No, I think it's uh, everybody's hitting zero 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 right now, and. Uh, Postseason at bats are a little bit different. Um, it's it's clean slate across the board, and and uh, whether and we did have some guys kind of scuffle in there, you know, to the last week or two. But you know that can turn around real quick. A big hit in a postseason game all of a sudden gets you going. So I want our guys just to relax and enjoy the moment and take the best at bats they can. The fourth row on your left, Brandon. Brandon, we see teams go under the kind of rebuild the Orioles have been through, you know, the process you guys have been through the past five years. It's less common that the manager survives that process. I was curious what lessons or perspective you've learned from the 100 lost days that have really helped you out now. Well, it's not that much fun. Learn that. <laughs> and to do it multiple years is really not fun. Um, this is a lot more fun. I just appreciate them sticking with me and appreciate uh, them believing in, in in me. And like I've said a lot, Mike had a lot more patience during those years in a, in a great way than I did. And there's some tough nights, and and Mike had the big picture in in mind. And and uh, you know, I've I've just appreciated our relationship and how he's put trust in me to uh, like the way I ran the club, like the way I ran the game, to to stick this through to when we got more talented to have a have a shot to be in a situation like this. And and um, so, I mean, there, there's you learn a lot about yourself, honestly, when you go through years and nights like that where you're 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 trying so hard to win a game in a, during a tough series, just to win a game during a series. Um, sometimes that was the that, – that, that made you feel good getting on the airplane. But, um, you know, we've come a long way, and I'm proud of those guys in that room that were that were there for those years, and sticking it out, and keeping a great attitude, and continuing to improve. And and now they get to play in a in a postseason. It's it's a great feeling. The third row on your left, Britt. Brandon, you mentioned a lot of your club doesn't have postseason experience. Um, what do you remember about the run you had as part of the Cubs, mm -hmm. and what can you maybe take take with that? this playoffs, whether it's hostile crowds or maybe how quickly the game changes. Uh, what do you remember about how different the, the postseason baseball can be? Yeah, I, I don't think it's, you know, I know that there's a lot to go through. There's a lot to go to that, that if you, when you have experience and you kind of know what it feels like already. I, I think our guys, um, I don't think our guys are going to be bothered by it. And I, that's what I felt like about those 15, 16 Cubs even though we did have a few veteran guys with some postseason experience, but we, had, we were a young team too. And we went into Pittsburgh in a wild card game after winning 97 games, and Jake Arrieta threw a nine-inning shutout um, with zero fear. And I think that's kind of what 
our guys are are kind of built like. Um, for me, we've played postseason type of games this last few weeks. Um, you know, it's hard to hold on to div division lead. It's hard to lose a couple games, the first two games of a series against a team that's trailing you, and then win the next two. It's not easy to do. Um, so for me, we showed a ton of character in those kind of postseason-like atmospheres. I mean, I'm talking about those two games at Tampa, against Tampa here. Um, and just how they, they rallied around each other, stayed together, didn't drop their head. Um, there wasn't any sort of negativity about losing those first two, but came back and win those next two. Showed me a, a ton about our team. Go up front on your right. Uh, <clears throat> Brandon, now that you've had some time to kind of study the Rangers, what do you make of that team, and how do you feel you guys match up against them? Yeah, it's a, it's a, one of the best offenses in baseball, if not the best offense in baseball, and um, the extremely dangerous, athletic, uh, power, a ton of power. Corey Seager, seen him a ton, um, seen him hurt. I've been on teams where he's he's really hurt us. Uh, just a really special hitter and a really great player. Um, but, you know, they have a ton of switch hitters in their lineup. Um, they're really balanced. So when we face a lefty, you're going to see four or five of each on, on each side. Um, you know, their they're pitching is different, obviously, with, with DeGrom and DeGrom being out. But, you know, you saw what Jordan Montgomery can do. And we saw, we've seen that also in New York. And... We know what Nate Eovaldi can do. We've seen him a lot when we were in Boston. He was in Boston, um, so they have some really good. They have really good starting pitching. Um, it's a good, really good roster, and so we have a work cut out for us. And uh, but you know, I think we're a good club also, and I think uh, it's going to be a good series. We'll stay right there, Brandon. I'm curious um, how well you know Bruce Bochy, and what do you remember about? going up against those Giants teams. I know you faced him in 2016. I, I don't know Bruce very well. Um, the last time I remember when he, when he was here was the was when he was with the Giants, and I think it was a kind of a retirement. <laughs> He's back managing, but we gave him a, a gift, I think, or we, did, we honored him on the field. And that was special for me, honestly, because I grew up in the Bay Area. Uh, you know, Bruce Bochy, um, I had a the unbelievable amount of respect for. And I watched closely how he ran games, especially in San Francisco years. Um, we competed against him in 16 in, the, in that divisional series in San Francisco. But he's so good, he, especially at that time without the three batter minimum, um, the way he could match up out of the bullpen, um, the way that his players love playing for him. You never heard a bad thing ever about Boach from a player. And uh, he's Absolutely, he's got the most respect, you know, an unbelievable amount of respect from everybody in this game just for how he can run a game and the respect he has from players. Do two more, second row on your left. Brandon, you guys haven't been swept all year. You, you, your longest losing streak was four. What does that tell you about your team and how does that help you in the postseason? It's, it, I'm not really sure. I think that, it, you know, I get asked that a lot, why we haven't been swept. I don't, I don't know the answer to that except um, – I know that our guys show up at the ballpark expecting to win. Whether it's we lost the last couple or won the last couple, I think that uh, it's a pretty consistent mindset. I think the next day starting pitcher always helps. Uh, but yeah, I just our guys like to play. They're they let even in our tough years. I felt like we you didn't we didn't come to the ballpark the next day um, with. With, with the attitude of of a, a carryover, um, I think it'd be that our group has done a great job of not carrying over to the next day, and um, that's possibly the reason why. And uh, third row, hey Brandon Ad Adley just said it earlier. Uh, he said this: the guys in this clubhouse care about each other, and different guys have said that along the way. How does that happen, from your point of view, and what is the value of that in this in this game? Yeah, well, it's a for me, it's a a huge deal just because you're living together for six months and you're in such close quarters and you're you're fighting with each other you're fighting together um, on a nightly basis um, how does it happen I think you create I think it started a long time ago and we, we created a pretty good clubhouse culture in some really lean years and like I said a ton you couldn't walk into our clubhouse th 
two or three, four years ago and, and feel that it was a 100 lost team, but there was actually um, a genuine positivity that was still, that was going on. Um, some of those core guys are still here and I think that they've carried that into, into this year. I thought we helped, got helped last year by a few veteran guys that hated to lose. Um, and, and Robbie Chirinos and, and Rugi and Jordan Lyles, that, that started kind of last year for me where uh, we started expecting to win. And then you get, you know, you get a little bit younger, you get more talented with Adley and Gunner and these guys that are ultra competitors and they just have meshed extremely well. And then the veteran guys we have on this club this year have done the same thing where it's, it's um, awesome leadership, take care of each other, team first attitude, and it's generally a really selfless group that uh, that enjoy playing pool together after games or or doing things on off days. And that's for me. That's when you have a, a true team, and that's what this team has become. Brandon, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, questions for Kyle. And we'll start with Rock up here. We'll get you the microphone. Kyle, when you think back to your first start, uh, ending in two thirds in Texas, the line drive, the injured list, uh, could you have ever imagined you'd be sitting here today talking about starting game one division series and weirdly against the same team? Um, no, uh, honestly, no. It's kind of just a dream to be able to start game one in the playoffs, let alone just be in the playoffs. So. Thinking about that, um, it's come a long way. I'll stay right there with Rich. Hey, uh, uh, Kyle. Uh, when did you know? When did you find out that uh, that you were going to be the game one starter? And had you been thinking about that possi possibility uh, for a while? Um, yeah. So we talked a little bit before my last outing. Um, said it was a possibility, um, and then they officially told me yesterday. Kyle, what do you feel like you've grown most this season? Um, there's a lot, uh, I'd say, I told you guys a lot, just command, um, just knowing the pitcher I am, uh, get better every outing, um, and knowing wor what works for me. Kyle, is, is there a start that stands out to you most this year that, you know, maybe it didn't go the way you wanted and you took something away from that that has helped you get to this point? Um, I'd say kind of the turning point was my outing in San Francisco, um, had a rough inning, um, and then got taken out of the fourth and then kind of there just had a little mindset shift just knowing that I can't keep doing that uh, it's hurting the bullpen hurting the team so just going out there working for a quality start every time was kind of the mindset after that one Kyle as you've been preparing what stands out to you about Texas a team that you guys haven't faced in a couple months now yeah I mean uh, I've watched them on TV a lot they've got really good players really good offense um, so it'll be a fun series but I've uh, faced them a couple times this year and last year, um, so I'm familiar with most of their guys. But, yeah, just, I mean, really good offense. Uh, on your right, Kyle, with Gabe. Uh, hey, Kyle. When you talk about growth, uh, what to you was the bigger year where you had a greater rate of growth? Was it 2022 when you really got your feet down in a big league rotation, or was it this year when you got deeper into games, started to see the seventh inning, and, and now you're starting game one of a playoff game? Yeah, um, Good question. Uh, I'd say, I'd say last year was kind of the bigger, bigger step for me. Um, my first ten starts didn't go the way I wanted them to, uh, and then ended up on the injury list for about a month, and then came back. And the second half was kind of just complete opposite of what the first half was. Um, and I think that gave me the confidence to go into the off season and, and just work, know what I can do, and have that success, and just keep working for that. Uh, far back on the right center aisle, Kyle. Hey, Kyle, um, when you think about what this ballpark is going to be like when you take the mound tomorrow, the, the, the noise level, the intensity, the energy, what's the biggest thing for you to kind of control your emotions and pitch to the best of your ability? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be a blast uh, having 45-plus thousand uh, Camden Yards fold up. Um, going to be really excited. But I think uh, it's, it's the same game that I've been playing. Uh, I've played in 
big stadiums that are full and loud. Um, just got to embrace it. Um, all these people are here to watch us and have fun, so why not do the same? And right up front on your right, Kyle. Kind of a follow-up to that. Uh, your teammates say how even kill you are, especially on the mound. How much do you think that's going to help you tomorrow, and how much do you think that that's helped you all season? Yeah, uh, I just try not to let one thing affect me too much. Um, it's kind of what I've been taught my whole career is just take it one pitch at a time. Don't let the last one affect the next one. So um, just got to go out there, trust my stuff, trust my defense, and just know that we've been doing this all year. Um, keep it rolling. In the third row on your right. Kyle, you mentioned you know your first 10 starts last year. Grayson went through kind of a similar thing this season. Is that something you and him have talked about at all? Uh, we talked a little bit. Um, when he was struggling and then ended up going down. Uh, I talked a little bit while he was down, and then when he came back up, um, just told him what I was told, just, hey, this is an opportunity to go clear your mind and get back to what you've done to get you here. So, um, I mean, hats off to him for run, running with that, and he's been so great for this team this uh, second half since he's came up. In the second row on your far left, Kyle. Kyle, you and the rest of the starters have, have taken – big leaps this year. What did these playoffs represent to you as an opportunity to show maybe the wider baseball world what's been happening here? Um, I mean, I think it's just another way for us to showcase our talents. Um, I know there's a lot of talk that our pitching staff, particularly the starting pitchers, kind of haven't been the strong suit to this team. So I think it's another opportunity to show what we are uh, actually capable of. We'll stay in the same row. Um, Kyle, the Ranger Stars obviously did really well in the wild card series against the Rays. How important is it for you as a starter to go out there, set the tone when you're matched up against them on the mound? Yeah, I think it's important to go out there uh, any game and set the tone as a starting pitcher. Um, especially being at home, you're going to be the first guy out there to start it. So uh, just going out there, set the tone, um, and just let our guys know that we're here. Same row right in the middle. Kyle, you guys were one of the surprise teams in the league last year. It's never a guarantee that that next year you'll be able to be even better. What has allowed you guys as a team to put yourself in the position that you're in now where you're the one seed in the American League? Uh, I think the biggest thing um, is we're, we're all friends. Um, kind of having that, that bond in the clubhouse, um, the culture that Hyde and everybody else has kind of created, and then just the talent that we have on this team. Um, through the free agents that we brought in to the younger guys that have came up. Um, I think you see a kind of complete team that are actually pull for each other no matter what. We'll stay right there. Kyle, I have the combined quality of your breaking balls been the best in your time in the pros, you know, right now, are they? And what makes them that? Um, yeah, I'd say this kind of whole season, um, after that first month where we kind of started relying on those heavier, um, they've kind of grown as as well as have I as a pitcher, and they just play off each other. Uh, they're both hard, but uh, slider goes one direction, and curveball is pretty 12-6. Uh, so being able to throw those um, around the same velo, I think, helps uh, keep hitters um, kind of off balance. The left center aisle, far back. Kyle, is it kind of surreal <clears throat> to be starting game one, your second season in the show? And what does it mean to you to have the trust of Brandon Hyde and the club to be out there and be that game one starter? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's an honor to start this first playoff game. Um, I want to say thanks to Hyde and everybody else. But, you know, uh, I expect this is what I expect out of myself. Um, so I'm just really looking forward to it. Uh, second row on your right, Kyle. Kyle, Brandon talked about the calmness in the locker room being very loose today as you get started for this series. How do you keep that level throughout this time against the Rangers? Um, I think just keep doing what we've been doing all year. Um, we don't let uh, that many things affect us. Uh, I think we're a pretty even keel as a whole team. Um, so just keep going about our business and doing what uh, we've been doing to get us here. Anything else for Kyle? All right, Kyle, congratulations and uh, good luck. Thank you, guys. Uh, Marcus Semyon and the Rangers uh, will be in here at about 3.20, and uh, Bochi and their game one.